So now MAGA is canceling their Netflix subscriptions. They're going to boycott Netflix because the co-founder of Netflix donated $7 million to the Kamala Harris campaign. And these are the people who we hear every day talk about cancel culture and wokeism and how everyone's out to get them and everyone's out to silence and cancel them. And then they cancel anyone who they disagree with. It's so hypocritical and it's so funny to watch. I actually enjoy sitting back watching them do this to themselves. I enjoy watching them deprive themselves of entertainment, deprive themselves of beer, deprive themselves of coffee, deprive themselves of a warm jacket in the winter. It's absolutely hilarious to watch them just throw everything away. These are the same people that went out and burned their Carhartt jackets. They could have gave them to the homeless, but no, they had to light them on fire. These are the same people that boycotted tar uh, Target because they couldn't stand the thought of walking by a gay nutcracker or a disabled Santa. That's how fragile they are. And they went out and shot up beer and destroyed it all because Bud Light put a transgender on a beer can and they couldn't just look the other way. And what was so funny about that one, the whole argument I made the entire time was that was not a can that was ever in the store, especially in my part of the world. I go down to the beer store, I never saw a transgender on a beer can ever. I saw an American flag on a Budweiser can once and walked on past it because I don't like Budweiser to start with. But it's so ridiculous watching them fight these culture wars. But it got me to thinking about the psychology of a Trump supporter because we talk a whole lot about him here on the channel and we talk about you know how cultish it truly is and we focus on the cult-like mentality because it's just so loud and in our face. But what we really need to do is actually get in there and examine how they come to this point and how they get so caught up in this cult. And I really believe that at the end of the day, the reason why they're so caught up in Donald Trump is because they're able to live vicariously through him. They are able to be their hateful and cruel self through him. They're allowed to not have a filter through him. And he gives them an identity. And he also gives them something that they think in their mind they're fighting for. They feel like they're fighting some kind of battle. We're talking about people who I'm sure had struggles in life. I'm not saying they had it easy, but they never faced racial discrimination. They never faced down bigotry. They never really faced down hatred. They've lived a pretty privileged life, but they have to have an enemy and they have to have a victim mentality. They really have to feel like they're the victims in the story and they're the ones being persecuted. And that's what Donald Trump started preaching to them. And that's what MAGA is all about is a victimhood kind of mentality. So they have to feel like they're fighting some kind of war, that they're fighting against some sort of enemy because in their mind, everyone is out to get them. And I really believe that that's why we see them canceling their Netflix subscriptions now. It's their way of saying, I'm in the fight. I'm sticking it to the liberals. I'm owning the liberals. But here's what they don't understand. When they come at us and say, we owned you, we got you, they didn't get anything. We're not looking over at them saying to ourselves, wow, you sure owned us. We're looking over at them going, man, this is sad. They're absolutely caught so far up in a cult and they've not got anything over on us. They've just fought a phony imaginary war in their own minds. But it gives them validation. It makes them feel validated. It makes them feel special. It makes them feel important that they're out there fighting this imaginary fight. And we have saw Donald Trump capitalize on this so well. If he's good at anything, folks, he's good at grifting. He's good at being a con man, and he's good at recognizing gullible people and un learning and understanding how to go about manipulating gullible people. But what they don't understand is that so much is riding on the line in this election, so much that we could be talking about. There's so many issues at hand that we on the left are bringing up. We're bringing up Roe versus Wade being overturned. We're bringing up the rights that have been stripped away from women. We're bringing up rights that have been stripped away from gay and trans people. We're bringing up rights that have been stripped away from people of color. Those are the things we're talking about. We're talking about how the Supreme Court is now stacked and in the hip pocket of Donald Trump. We're talking about how that a president has now been made king. Those are the issues that we're bringing up. We're talking about how we can move our country forward and we can come together and figure out how to solve our problems. That's what we're talking about. Meanwhile, they're canceling Netflix because they're caught up in that and they don't understand the real issues at hand. It's just about how can I stick it to the liberals and how can I fight alongside Donald Trump to show him I'm special, to show him that I mean something too. It's truly sad to watch them not actually pay attention to the issues at hand and just accuse us of being hyperbolic. They'll accuse us of being hyperbolic and they'll think that they've owned us with some new t-shirt design they come up with and they don't realize that they're not winning anything 
They're not actually getting anything in return. One day they're gonna wake up and the America that we were all promised as kids is gonna be long gone. And it's gonna start hitting home to them. Suddenly their rights are gonna be gone. Suddenly their daughter's rights will be completely gone. They'll look around and go, how did this all happen? And I'm sure they'll find a way to twist it and blame it on Democrats. But all they have to do is just go back and roll back the footage of us telling them, hey, this is what was happening. While you were caught up and distracted arguing about Bud Light, all you had to do was not drink it. That's all you had to do. You didn't have to make that your identity. You didn't have to make that who you were. You didn't have to make that the hill you were willing to die on. There are people out there that is willing to die on this hill that they canceled Netflix. And that's so ridiculous to me. They boycotted football. That's the hill they wanted to die on. The hill I want to die on is defending democracy. The, deal I want to, the hill I'm willing to die on is, is standing up against a dictatorship and not wanting authoritarianism to rule America. That, that's, that's, that's the hills I'm willing to die on. I'm not, I don't care because folks, there are all kinds of things in my life that I walk past on a daily basis I walk by things that offend me. You gotta remember, I'm living right here in the Bible Belt. I'm living in one of the most red places you could ever live. Every street I drive down has a church on it. I don't believe in God. I'm not a Christian, okay? I'm agnostic, but I drive past churches all the time. I read their signs, I keep going. I don't say that that church should be shut down. I don't say that people shouldn't be allowed to go in there and worship. I just simply don't go. I drive by houses with the Confederate flag flying over it. I do not agree with that flag. I'm glad I threw mine in the garbage when I was younger. But I drive on past it. I go to what we, we have these things down here called flea markets. Man, go to one of those. Every aisle, you're going to see merchandise. If you're one of us, if you're on our side of the aisle, if you're a left-leaning progressive person who has a more secular view of the world, you're going to see all kinds of things that you're not going to like the looks of. But you know what I do? I keep walking right on past it till I get to where I'm going. But they can't walk through Target because if they see a gay nutcracker, they're going to lose their mind. If they see a pride shirt, they're going to lose their mind. And what's so funny about this is this is not about Democrat versus Republican. To anyone out there who thinks this is a Democratic-Republican argument, it's not. Because the Republicans that I used to argue with argued that they wanted more limited government. They wanted smaller government. They didn't want the government to get involved in people's lives. I thought that was the argument Republicans always made. But MAGA isn't making that argument at all. They want the government to get involved. They want the government to get involved and they want the government to write laws to prohibit people that they disagree with from living their life to the fullest. And meanwhile, they fly a flag that says, don't tread on me. Can anyone explain that? Can anyone out there explain that? Let me tell you something. If you start putting up walls against your neighbors, you're gonna wake up one day and realize that what you did was build the wall around yourself. If you start stripping away rights from your neighbor because you disagree with their religious preference or you disagree with their politics or you disagree with, their, with how they identify as a human being and you start stripping those rights away, you're going to wake up one day to realize that you have done yourself. The only way that democracy truly works is if everyone is allowed to disagree and to agree to disagree. But when you start backing a man who says he wants to be dictator on day one and terminate the Constitution, and you start backing those things and you like the sound of it because he's coming after the people you can't stand and the people you don't understand and the people you're afraid of. So you think, oh, he's fighting for me. So let me show my loyalty to him by canceling my Netflix subscription. And you're gonna wake up one day, you ain't gonna be watching Netflix anymore, but you're also gonna be watching your daughter's future just circle the rain right in front of you. Your family members that, that, that depend on the government, your family members that, that needs help and needs, that, that are disabled and aren't able to work, you're gonna sit and watch their life just go down the drain. All because you got caught up in some moment and thought you was doing some noble thing by canceling Netflix. Keep watching your movies, keep being entertained. You're gonna need it. You're really gonna need it if you continue down this road. But we've sat back and watched them boycott everything and cancel everything. And I can't count the messages I get on a daily basis from people saying, we can't wait till they shut you up. And then they want to sit back and talk about freedom of speech and how they're all about the First Amendment. It's so ridiculous watching them do this. But part of me deep down, I hate to say it, I kind of halfway just enjoy watching it. Because if you're that if you're that caught up in this circus that you would take away all, you're going to get rid of your football, get rid of your Netflix, get rid of your beer and burn your jacket. I mean... I guess just have at it. I mean, I don't, I don't know what else to say because the rest of us are sitting back. You think it's some flex. You think you really got us. You really owe them liberals. No, we're sitting back laughing going, my God, what will they do next?